not what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that just isn't so. Welcome to Life in Accounting, the Where Accountants Go podcast. Life in Accounting is the podcast for everyday heroes like you working in the accounting profession. Are you ready to hear from accounting influencers, thought leaders, visionaries, and other professionals leading change in the accounting world? Then stay tuned for Mark Goldman, a CPA, the owner of Where Accountants Go, and your host. Welcome to Life in Accounting. Welcome, everybody. This is Mark Goldman, your host for Life in Accounting, the Where Accountants Go podcast. First of all, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the listeners. As of the recording of this episode, we had over 2,000 downloads of just the first 10 episodes of the program, and I very much appreciate you choosing to, to spend your time with us each week. By the time this comes out, we may even be at 3,000. It's been a wonderful journey, and thank you so, so much. Secondly, I also want to thank those that are sharing it via social media, and particularly, I wanted to give a shout out to two of our previous guests, Brian Morgan and Sarah Vargas. You guys have really been spreading the word, and I very much appreciate that. This is a special episode. I have a guest that I've wanted to get on the show for a very long time, John Bruce. He's a tax partner with the San Antonio office of BKD. John's story is unique and interesting and and I believe very valuable because it's not a traditional story of going to college, passing the CPA exam, becoming a staff person, then senior, then supervisor, manager, then department. John has some twists and turns in his story and I think there's some good lessons to be learned in there. Secondly, he shares some excellent excellent advice at the end of the program so i hope you stay tuned all the way till the end he's got some some real good nuggets at the end that he shares which i very much appreciate so without further ado here we go well hello john thank you for making the time to join us today sure mark not a problem glad to, glad to be here well thank you i really appreciate it Well, I wanted to schedule a time to have you on the show because you've obviously had a very successful career in public accounting. And I think some of our listeners that are wanting to eventually go down that path and become a partner at a CPA firm would definitely benefit from your story. And plus, I'm sure there are some twists and turns in there, so to speak, that'll make the story just that much more interesting. So thank you again. Before we get into sort of the backstory or the earlier history, Tell us a little bit about what you do currently at BKD. Sure. So I am a tax partner here at BKD, and I'm also the director here in our San Antonio office, which basically means I I lead the tax department here in San Antonio. And within my, my client base, I serve primarily clients in the healthcare and real estate industries. So a little bit of a variety there, and they kind of mesh nicely as far as the timing of some of that work and some of the expertise involved as well. Okay, that evens out your workload a little bit during the year. Is that what you're saying? Exactly right. Yep, that's right. Okay, beautiful. So how did you get into accounting in the first place? Oh, that's a good story. So, (laughs) you know, after, actually after high school, I went to UTSA study. I was going to major in engineering and realized when I got into calculus two that maybe I wasn't cut out to be an engineer. (laughs) So actually, believe it or not, I I took a semester off college at that point in time, and that semester lasted almost six years. So about six years later, I went back to school at St. Mary's University and I knew I wanted to get a business degree, but did not know what I was going to major in. And the advisor kept telling me I had to major in something And so my question was, well, what's the hardest business degree to get? And she said, well, probably accounting. And I said, well, okay, I'll try that. And ended up in my first accounting class and it just kind of clicked. You know, my brain just kind of clicked with accounting and it actually seemed really easy to me and it made sense. And, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. So that's how I got into accounting. Okay. 
It seems like several accounting majors start in engineering. I know I've heard that story before. I, I don't know if you have or not. <laughs> yes, I have. It's it's pretty common, I think. <laughs> I think, like I said, the higher level of calculus, I think, gets a whole bunch of us switching over to accounting majors. There you go. In accounting, we get a calculator. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, <laughs> and all we do, all we do, is add and subtract and divide and multiply. That's about as complicated as we get. <laughs> So what did you do in those six years between, I guess, uh, the six years of finding yourself? What what were you up to during that time? Yeah, actually, you know, during high school, I worked at a golf course here in San Antonio. And so I actually worked full time at the golf course. I was kind of a greenskeeper, riding a lawnmower and running a front end loader and doing, you know, kind of construction work. For oh, a while. Wow. And after about five years of that, kind of said, you know, I'm going to need to do something else because... I just, you know, kind of needed to grow up some and find myself a little bit. And so finally decided I'd go back to school and I'm glad I did, you know, and just kind of fell into the accounting. You know. And it worked out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Worked out well. There's some irony in the fact that you worked on a golf course for five and a half years and later on you become a partner in an accounting firm. I, I think you should get some college credit for that or, or an internship credit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they didn't give me any. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It did, though. It really helped me. And when I was younger and in high school, I'd get summer jobs, you know. And, I, and I'm, you know, my dad would always tell me, well, that job, at least you learn that you don't want to do that the rest of your life. And so, you know, there's some things that we go through that we just have to – you know, we have to go through them to, to really understand and maybe give us some motivation as we go forward in life. That's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah, I bet your I bet your family was glad that you had that golf course job just to let you learn about life the hard way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what did you first do out of college? Do you do you go directly to public accounting or take a little detail? Yeah, working? so yeah, so what I did when I finished at St. Mary's well, actually, while I was there at St. Mary's, about my, I guess, my junior year, sophomore year, I actually got a part-time job at a small CPA firm. And so I started off, you know, kind of doing the very basic bookkeeping, payroll taxes. You know, mm. I was doing that, that type of work while I was in college so that by the time I graduated, I had two and a half, three years of kind of experience doing that type of work. And yeah, once I graduated from St. Mary's, interviewed with all the now now the big four accounting firms and had a few offers, but I really liked the local firm I was working at and I liked the culture there. And so I ended up accepting an offer from them to start my career there, that practice. How long did you stay at the local firm? So what I did is I worked there. So I finished college in December of 1992. And okay. I worked there until probably mid-1994. So worked there maybe another two and a half, maybe I worked there about two and a half years. And then I got okay. this crazy, I got a crazy idea that I wanted to work for myself. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Uh, yeah. So I left there and I hung my shingle and I worked for myself for about five years. Okay. I assume doing taxes? Yes. Yep. Doing taxes. Okay. So what did you learn from that experience? You know, working in a for yourself in in this industry in a small small one person shop was really difficult. I was able to, you know, I've always been a pretty good business development guy and so I was able to build up a client base and bring in new business and things but but in a very small shop like that, you know, where you've got to be the director of marketing, the director of technology, the director of production and then now our industry has gotten so complicated and there's just so much to know that it's just impossible for one person to know everything. So the big takeaway for me was that, you know, it really takes a team of people to be able to provide service to clients in a professional manner. Okay. So you didn't have any problem with the business development side. It was more just all the other administrative tasks that you have. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. And so it's actually so I do so I worked for myself for about five and a half years and, and once I kinda came to this realization that, you know, I, I don't really want to just work for myself. I think I'd maybe do better in a larger firm. So I kinda interviewed with several firms here in town and ended up in August of ninety nine I accepted an offer actually at the office I'm not at now at BKD, which was at that point in time was Hanky Green and Stein. So that was in August of ninety nine and so I've been in the same place ever since. Wow. 
Yeah. When did you become partner, or how long has that been? Became partner in 2007 or 8. I think 2007, I believe. Okay. I'm curious, having your own practice, I guess, what level did you come in at? Did they bring you in as a senior or... No, I came in as like, as, like, no, I came in. Yeah, it's interesting. That That is interesting. Of course, I kind of own my own little firm. So, of course, I thought I should come in as a partner, right? Of course. Uh, <laughs> of course, exactly. No, but I came over as a senior manager. And it was an adjustment because, you know, obviously at a larger firm, you're taking care of larger, more sophisticated clients than certainly I was taking care of, you know, just working for myself. So it, it was the right, it was the right level to bring me in at, you know, at that point in time. Okay. Yeah. Out of curiosity, did you have any employees when you were self-employed? I did. I had two employees. And oh, okay. After a while, I had one partner. So me and another CPA kind of merged our practices together. Oh. Um, yeah, so just a couple of employees. Okay. Okay. What did you do with your practice when you took the job at Hanke? Did you sell it to your uh, partner? Or? I basically brought you know my clients with me. And as a senior manager, I, I functioned pretty much serving those clients as I always had done before. Okay. Actually, senior manager isn't a bad level to come in at no. uh, from, from being self-employed. They obviously saw the, the potential. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. I guess so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that or it was a good bet that paid off one or the other. <laughs> there you go. There you go. A long shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what do you credit your success in public accounting to? What, what traits do you have, do you think, that, that's helped you along the way? You know, I think the main thing is that we just have to be willing to invest in ourselves and kind of, you know, people have heard this term, you know, be kind of in this lifelong learning process. Okay. You know, I learn stuff almost every day and even, you know, even being a partner here for how many years now, but constantly learning things. So having the ability to do that and the willingness to do that and to, you know, not kind of get stuck in a rut, wanting to do the same thing all the time has really helped me in my career. You know, okay. I've had to I've had to learn new industries at times when maybe we had a partner who retired. Well, we did. A good example, you know, we had a partner who retired that was doing a lot of our uh, tax exempt work at the time and so for a few years I had to step in and take care of a bunch of that work. So, you know, that took quite a bit of learning on my part, but um mm-hmm. that's really a necessity in certainly in this industry is being able to invest in yourself. And some of that has to happen outside of office hours. You know, if I was to give advice to younger folks out there, you know, it would be that a lot of that investment time you know, is investing in our own personal skills and knowledge base. And so, you know, some of that we're not always going to be getting paid for sitting in our workstation. We're going to have to be doing some of that stuff in the evening at home. There you go. You know, in my experience, one of the difficulties, actually one of the leading difficulties people have CPAs when they go out on their own, and then also this sometimes prohibits them from becoming partner is business development. So what do you think it is about your personality or your work habits or I guess what advice would you have for someone on how to develop those skills? Boy, good question. You mentioned personality. I mean, I think some of it just comes naturally to some people, but I also think that a lot of it can be learned. And one of the things that, and I've led some of our business development seminars and things here in our office that we do in-house. And one of the things that really helps, and, and a lot of times people, if you tell them that we're going to have a, a little training session on selling, well, immediately they get a bad, they have a bad connotation about the word selling. I don't want to sell. I just want to be an accountant. I want to be a technician. I don't want to be a marketer. Sure. And one of the things I, I try to stress is that if we think, and if and this is what I believe, is that I believe that I can help businesses become more efficient, become more profitable, save taxes, whatever the case may be. If I really think I can help them do that, then I should be out there talking to people about how I think I can help them. I'm not out there just selling. I'm out there trying to help people and help their businesses. I think that's a big part of it. And I think just personality. You know, I mean, you do have to have some personality and you have to be able to relate to people and, and you have to be able to understand where businesses or where people's kind of pain points are and, you know, what, what are their struggles and, and what do they need help with? Hmm. Yeah, yeah and, you, and you it, make a good point there. I hadn't thought about it, but in general, accountants tend to be more on the humble side 
And I think that makes business development just a little harder for us because there's so many things we can do for the mm-hmm. customer, but we, we don't like tooting our own horn, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I do think that's, I do think that's pretty common. And certainly, you know, there's a, there's a limit to how much that you can do that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. And, and the other thing is that it is a lot easier if you're able to specialize in something. Because if I'm just out there marketing myself as well, I'm a tax accountant and I do corporate tax and partnership taxes. That's a very broad brush to paint to try to, to try to sell yourself. But if I can go out myself as, you know, I do corporate tax and consulting in the healthcare industry and because I understand this and that about the healthcare industry and I can look at a prospect's financial statements or tax return and I can say, ooh, why, why aren't you doing this or that? which is pretty common in the industry, which is what I see happening, you know, maybe you should, you should consider some of these things. Well, then now I'm able to sell myself much easier because, again, I, it's not just the tax return. I'm able to help them in their business. That's a good point. What other specialties have you had while you've been at BKD? Have you always been in the healthcare and real estate area, or is that something that's changed over the years? I've always been in the healthcare I've also done, again, tax-exempt work, probably starting five, six years ago, started doing a little bit more on the real estate side, and have also done some financial institution tax work, so banks, basically. Hmm. Yeah. But you definitely you know, got some variety in there. Yes. Yep. That's good. Well, we've talked a lot about your success, and I, I appreciate that. I think your story is, is very important there, again, for people that are looking to, to be a partner. Is there anything you would have done differently in your career? You know, Early. that is a great question. I would probably say, of course, I can always look back and say, well, I could have done this differently. I could have done that differently. But, sure, you know, Mark, the, really the way I look at it is at this point, I would not. So I would say, no, I wouldn't do anything differently because the things that I did do, the decisions that I made, the places I worked, uh, kind of the, the road that I traveled is the one that got me where I am today. And I wouldn't give up where I'm at today for anything. I love my job. I love the company I work for. I love what I do. I love helping clients. And so because I really enjoyed that, I don't think I would change anything. You know, and some people yeah, might be surprised about that. Some people might be surprised and say, you mean you wouldn't have studied a little harder that first year out of college so you didn't have to work at the golf course for six years? And <laughs> like, no, you know, not. Looking back now, and maybe it's because I'm getting old, right? But I don't think I would change it. Hey, if things have worked out well, you know, you're right. Even even the tough times, they were there for a reason. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's a good point. And you probably had enough time on the golf course at this point. I mean, five and a half years. Come on. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah. I still never learned how to play golf very well, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, being at the level you're at, I, I just have to ask this. What are your thoughts on the future of the profession, e- either the CPA profession in general or public accounting? Where, where do you see us going? Well, a couple of things with that. And the first being technology. Just in, in the last, what have I been doing this, 23, 24 years now? You know, when I first started, we weren't quite doing tax returns by hand, but it wasn't it wasn't far from that. We kind of just barely, so in the late 1980s, you know, we were barely doing tax returns on computers. And so in the past 24 years, the technology changes have just have been incredible. But I really think in the next 10 years that those changes are just going to be exponential to where they are now. One of the big things nowadays is what they call machine learning or artificial intelligence. And when you think about that and what impact that could have on not only what I do, say taxes, but on the audit side of our practice, it could have significant impacts. People talk about disruptive technology. I think our industry has the potential to really be disrupted by some of this technology that's coming down the pipeline. You know, for example, right now, everybody's heard the term big data and data analytics and all that. But, you know, there are, there are companies that are using what they call continuous auditing, where they don't have an auditor come in and sample transactions three months after the end of the year. I mean, they've got machines and computers that are testing the entire universe of their transactions for certain criteria. And, 
And with machine learning, these computers are learning how to do this. They're learning to catch things and look at trends and things like that. I think it could have a profound impact on our industry over the next 10 or 15 years. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on, you know, for people maybe, you know, in the middle of their college career or just getting started and, and they're thinking of becoming an accountant, anything they can do to, to prepare for that? If I was in school right now and, and knew, you know, kind of know what I know, or I've been around the industry this long. Yeah, I mean, I, I would somehow couple my accounting degree certainly with some type of either data analytics, big data study, how to manipulate data and interpret data. Because I, I, I just think that's going to be a big key going forward. Just like you look at several years ago, what forensics and forensic accounting was the big, the big popular thing to get into. And, and I think that still is to some extent. And of course, they use, obviously, forensics uses a lot of these data analyzing tools and techniques. I think if I had a background in some type of programming or analytics coupled with my accounting degree, it would bode well for me in the future. That's a good point. You know, gosh, that's a whole nother podcast episode we could do on that. That's Yeah, on how technology... Give me some and, ideas. Mm-hmm, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's four questions I end every episode with, and I like to, to ask them of every guest. So first of all, what has been your proudest moment? Actually, probably would be very early in my career, and which would be basically getting my graduating from college. I was the first generation college student. My parents never went to college, hmm. and I was the only one of my siblings to graduate from college. And so that was a big deal. It was a big deal for me. And, and certainly after being out of college for six years and not knowing that I would or wouldn't go back, it was, it was a big deal for me. And then passing the CPA exam. A lot different back then than it is now. I had to take it three times. And so it was extremely difficult. And passing that was very rewarding. And then walking the stage up in Austin was certainly a very proud moment in my career. Yeah, happy to get it past you at that point, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'm just glad they don't make us retake it every year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, conversely, tell us about a mistake you've made and what you learned from it, of course. And frankly, the more colossal, the better. <laughs> colossal <laughs> mistakes. Well, you know, I, I don't. I probably don't have one that I could single out because there's just so many to choose from. <laughs> not, not really. You know, I, I'll just talk kind of in general. I mean, my, I think the mistake I made early in my career, and, and even let's say early to mid-career, was not knowing when to ask for help and maybe being too proud to ask for help or thinking that, thinking that I, I knew the answers. And again, as I spoke about, you know, when I worked for myself, I mean, there was kind of nobody else to ask. But even when I came over to BKD, I think that would be a mistake, that that would be one thing that I would do over again would be not to be ashamed, not to be afraid to, to ask for help when I don't know the answers. I can't remember who said it, but there's a quote that says, it's not what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that just isn't so. Hmm. <laughs> that, really gets you in, that really gets you in trouble. And, and so I've, you know, that's happened a few times in my career where I, th- I thought I knew the answer, didn't think I needed to ask anybody or confirm it with somebody that maybe had a little bit more expertise in that area and got myself in trouble. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, I've I've sat in on panels of interns that have have already went through a couple internships, talking Mm -hmm. to students that are getting ready to go through that process. And and that's some of the advice I've heard is that, you know, don't be intimidated. No one to ask a question because that's the whole point. And so, yes, it, it starts early on. That's a good point. Exactly. And, Firms nowadays, I mean, it's just so specialized that nobody knows everything. Another saying that another guy at my firm, I I stole his quote, but he says, I'm a partner at a really big accounting firm and we've got a lot of smart people. I may not be one of them, but I certainly know who to call when I have a question. (laughs) (laughs) Well, who's been the biggest mentor or biggest influencer so far in your career? There were two partners here back when I, when I first came over to the firm I'm at now, which was a predecessor firm before we merged into BKD, which was called Hanky Green and Stein. There were two partners there. One of them was a tax partner and one was an audit partner who was the managing partner of the office. Tax partners named a guy named Mike Elder and then the audit partner was a guy named Jack Stein. And they really taught me 
to serve larger clients, how to, how to be a, really how to be a professional. So beyond just the technical abilities, which certainly they helped me with, but it really taught me a lot about how to serve clients, how to take care of clients, how to take care of staff. They were two really big mentors, really helped my career. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, you've been there a long time. I figured they had to be from from the BKD slash Hanky group. <laughs> it's been the there majority of your career. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last question. What's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice would be the quote somebody told me and actually was in this industry. Somebody at our firm actually was a, one of the managing partners of our whole firm a long time ago of the BKD firm. And it's a quote. And actually, we, we have a we have a book we call it our Client Service Excellence, Unmatched Client Service Book. And it's a quote in this book. And the quote says, don't tell me why we can't. Tell me how we can. So, you know, that goes towards figuring out solutions. Don't just take the first look at something and say, no, we can't do that. It's a matter of, of taking a deeper dive, looking at things deeper, more analytically, and figuring out how we can do something. So being tenacious about it, yep. Yes. That's, that's a good quote to end this on because that touches your career internally, you know, when you're working anywhere, frankly, but then mm-hmm. also touches on customer service because the customer doesn't want to know why we can't do it. They want to know how we can. Exactly. Makes a lot of sense. Yep, that's exactly right. Yep. It does. It does. Well, I said four questions. Actually, I guess there was a fifth. Uh oh. If so, <laughs> it's an easy one. It's an easy one. If someone wants to get a hold of you afterwards, maybe they want to know more about BKD, or they'd like to know more about your journey, or or your thoughts on pursuing partnership and and that kind of thing. What's the best way to reach you, John? I would probably say to call my office. Okay. You know, I, I would say email me, but you know, Mark, this technology and emails. I'm getting so many emails every day. That I tell you, that's a big. <laughs> that's one of the things we're looking at in our firm is is maintaining our people's productivity with the volume of email. It's incredible. So yeah, I could call my office. That number is, of course, here in San Antonio, two one zero three four one nine four zero zero. Wonderful. Actually, that's perfect, John. Phone number is is excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank sure. You. Yeah. Well, thanks again. I think this has been very productive. I know people will get a lot out of it. We have listeners really banning the gamut from just thinking about accounting to, I'm sure, even thinking about retirement. But I know we've got a lot of student listeners, so this will be very beneficial for them. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Very good. You're very welcome. It was very nice talking to you. Thanks. You too. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, that was my interview with John Bruce, a tax partner with the San Antonio office of BKD. There were several nuggets to take away from this interview. First of all, I really appreciate how open John was about the mistake because it's very true, not knowing when to ask for help or being afraid to ask for help can be particularly damaging, not just early in your career, but but really throughout. And I really appreciate how open John was about that. And I think that there's a a lot to be learned there. And then secondly, the the quote he mentioned at the end, don't tell me why we can't, tell me how we can. And obviously that applies not just to careers in accounting, but for careers overall, particularly anything interfacing with the customer. There's a lot of of truth and, and insight in that quote. Well, this has been another edition of Life in Accounting, the Rare Accountants Go podcast. I really appreciate you choosing to spend your time with us. If you found this beneficial and you have subscribed to via iTunes or Stitcher or another search engine, please visit our website as well at whereaccountantsgo.com and click on the podcast page and click the subscribe button there as well. We would love to know who you are and keep in contact with you. Until next time, we've got some great guests lined up over the next few weeks. As I always say, there's more to come.